let us look at data transformation visualization is super important for insight generation but it is very rare that you would get the data in the right format and that is where data transformation comes into play you might need to create new variables you might also have to create summaries or maybe you simply want to reorder the data and all of this will make it easier for us to work with the data set so i'm going to use two libraries one is nyc flights 13 and the other is library and tidyverse okay let's quickly see what is the nyc flights 13 data so this is um, a data set which has okay we just need to write flights here excellent so this is a data set where we have on time flight data that have departed from new york city in 2013 we have the year month and the day of the date of departure the time of departure and the time of arrival the scheduled departure time and the scheduled arrival time any delay in the departure and the arrival the carrier name which is a two letter abbreviation the flight number the tail number origin and destination the amount of time spent in the air which is the air time the distance between the airports time of scheduled departure and the scheduled date and hour of the flight so it's a very nice data set and it's also a very common data set um, when you want to start learning how to work on r we have the data set for 336776 flights so it's a very large data set provided by the us bureau of transportation statistics now if you look at the data set let me just put in a run you would see that all of the data can be seen like this now what are these int 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 i'm sure you must have guessed the int refers to integers dbl refers to doubles which are real numbers and chr refers to character vectors or string values we also have something called dttm so let me just write it down we have int for integer then we have dbl for real numbers which are doubles chr for character vectors or strings and finally we have dttm which is for a date and a time these are the most common in addition to these you also have lgl which is a logical operator true or false we have fc tr which is a factor and then finally we have the plane date which is just date without the time value in this lecture we are going to start with dp lyr and we will look at some basics let's start with the filter now the filter as it says allows you to subset observation based on the values that means that you want to take a large data set and you only want to extract a specific subset from that data let's take an example so i want to apply a filter and on the flights data we want to say that the month is equal to 1 and the day is equal to 1 if you notice the difference it is now only showing you the data 
like earlier this was 336,000 rows here we only have about 832 rows like this so we are only looking at the 1st of January we can also save it in an object we can say Jan 1 and then do it like this and now we write Jan 1 it gives us the same result if you want to see the result at the same time we can simply enclose it in a parenthesis for example December 25th and let me just say that this is 12 and this is 25 so this time we have 709 rows like this let's um, look at a simpler example now if I use filter flights and month is equal to 1 you notice that there is an error that happened it's very common to make this mistake thankfully R is very handy at telling us why that mistake happened we have used a single equal to instead of a double equal to so just keep this in mind you don't want to do an assignment you want to do a equality which is month is equal to 1 like this excellent let's um, look at something else now what if you want to look at the flights that have departed in November or December to do this we can write filter flights and then we will keep the month as 11 and then a double pipe this acts like an or operator so what we are saying is that it should be 11 or 12 which means either November or December so we get the data like this let me just clear it once again now the order of operations does not work like English so we can't just write filter flights month is 11 double pipe 12 so what we use here is a shorthand and even though I will be explaining this a little later for now you can just look at this this is let's say an object NOV DEC for November December we can filter our flights and I have said that the month modulus in modulus and then concatenate 11 comma 12 like this and when we write NOV DEC we get the result like this so do not worry too much about what this N refers to we will be covering this later the C here is a concatenate which simply means we are concatenating two months November and December but I hope you saw how, how much simpler it became by using the N inside this one line of code All right, let's look at one more example. I want to write filter flights and then my arrival delay, which is greater than 120 minutes and then my departure delay is also greater than 120 minutes and you get the result like this I'm sure you must have guessed that the exclamation means not equal to we could have also written it in a slightly different way where we could have written that arrival delay is less than equal to 120 comma departure delay is less than or equal to 120 right same result but two different ways of doing this 
Handling missing values is also super important. Let's see this. So we want to look at missing values here. Missing values are represented by NA, which means that these are unknown values. For example, if you say NA greater than 5, we get NA. If I write 10 is equal to NA, we get NA. If I say NA plus 10, we get NA once again. And if I say NA divided by 2, we again get NA. And the most confusing is this one. If I say NA is equal to NA, we also get NA. Let's look at a little bit of context to understand how this is working. So we will say that let x be the age and we don't know the age, right? So if we say that x is an object in which we have NA. Same thing, we will say that let y be an age and we don't know the age. So we will say that y is an object with NA. Now if you say that x is equal to y, you notice the, let me just run it once again. You notice the result comes as NA, like this. Right, I hope that makes sense. If you want to determine if a value is missing, we can use is.na. So if I say is.na and we say x, it tells us true. That means that the object x actually has a missing value. Now coming back to filter, filter will only include rows where the condition is true, which means it excludes. So filter excludes both false and any. So you have to keep this in mind. So I'm going to create a data frame and let's create a table where x is equal to concatenate 1, any and 3. So there are three items in this. And if I now filter my data frame and we say that x is greater than 1 and let's run it. The result, if you notice, comes as, watch again. Let me clear everything first. The result comes as x, double and 3. Makes sense? Let's take one more example. If I say filter and we say data frame, and is dot na x or x is greater than 1. Then what is the result? Um, let me just check this. Okay. All right. This time we notice the result comes as na and 3. So it is showing us the na as well. Earlier we were only getting the, look at the first line. We were only getting the 3 value and this time we are getting both na and 3 like this. We have done the filter. Now let's look at arrange. So arrange is very similar to filter and it allows us to select the rows and changes the order. So it doesn't actually give you a subset, but it changes the order. So it takes a data frame and a set of column names and it orders it. Let's take an example. We can arrange our data, which is flights, by the year, by the month, and the day. And you notice the data is arranged automatically like this. Let's take one more example. If I want to arrange my flights data in a descending order as per departure delay, now you notice. Departure delay is in a 
designing order 1301 1137 1126 and so on now missing values will always be sorted at the end so just keep that in mind missing values are sorted at the end let's take an example so i'll take the same example we had earlier this one and let's just change something so we say 5 and 2 and any and then we say arrange so you notice that it gives us 2 5 and any so the any will always come at the very end and if i say arrange df descent you again notice any comes at the very end so we get 5 2 and any so we've done filter and arrange now let's look at select now it is not uncommon for you to get data sets that run into hundreds or even thousands of variables and in this case the first challenge is to narrow down to the variables that you are interested in and for this we can use select now even though in our current flights data set we only have 19 variables um, you will still get the idea for example if we say select flights the year month and day you notice it only selects the year month and day from the flights data set we can also select a range so if i say select flights year to day this means that we want to select all the columns between year and day we get the same result um, just give me a moment it says that there is no package called year that's surprising why should it say that there is a package called year um, let me see if there's something that we're not doing properly just give me a moment okay i'm not sure why i put a double uh, please ignore that we only want to put a single colon not a double colon and as you can see we get all the three columns from year month and day we can also do the opposite which means that if I do the same thing and this time we put a minus this means that we want to look at all of the columns except year and day so all of the others are available all of the other variables except year and day okay the next thing we want to do is to look at how select can be used with renaming variables for example we can use rename flights and we will say that the tail num is equal to tail num so what happens is that just a moment yeah So here you would notice that, let me just expand this a little bit. Right. We are taking the tail num and we are changing that into a new name that we have given which is tail underscore num, like this. You might not be able to see all the variables here, so let me just click on view and that will allow you to see Let me just try that once again. Um, just a moment okay so you notice that in a new window you can see all of the different variables and if you notice tail underscore num is the new variable we have created while originally it was tail num without an underscore between them right excellent now 
another option to use select is to use it in conjunction with everything. For example, if you say select flights and we are taking time or and we are taking the air time and we say everything and we run this we are basically moving it to the start so you notice that time r and air time have become the first two variables in our data set let's look at mutate now so, so far we have selected existing columns and we have changed the order, but mutate will allow us to add new columns. And by default, new columns are always added at the end of the dataset. Let's take an example. So flights SML is the object we are creating and we want to select our flights. And we want to select from year to day. Ends with daily and distance and the air time. Now we can mutate flights SML. We will say that the gain is equal to the departure delay minus the arrival delay, and my speed is equal to the distance divided by airtime multiplied by 60, like this. Let's run both of these and see the result. So you notice the result comes like this. So we're getting 336,000 rows into nine columns and gain and speed are two new calculations that we have done just now. Please note that we can refer to the columns that we have just created. For example, we can do another mutate flights SML and gain is equal to departure daily minus arrival daily. We can say that the hours is equal to air time by 60 and we can also say that the gain per hour is equal to the gain divided by the number of hours like this. And we get the result like this along with the gain per hour. If you only want to keep the new variables, then you can do the same thing. But rather than using mutate, you can use transmute. It's very easy uh, to make a mistake. A lot of people write transmutate. It's actually transmute. And now you notice we only get the three new columns that we have created. Excellent. So we've done this example. Let's continue. Now there are many functions for creating new variables that we can use with mutate. So we can use arithmetic operators obviously and we can also use the modular arithmetic which is like this. So we call this the modular arithmetic. So this is what we call an integer division. Right? And then we have the double modulus which is my remainder. So modular arithmetic is a very handy tool since it will allow you to break the integers into different pieces. Uh, Classic example would be to do this with a date time value. Let's take an example. Transmute flights 
the departure time then we have the hour which is the departure time 100 and then we have the minute which is equal to departure time and then we'll write 100 I hope you all can guess the result the result will be like this so very nicely the departure time of 517 has been broken down into 5 and 17 in different columns we also have logarithmic operators but we will not get into so much detail that's not something that we will use very commonly we also have ranking for example if we concatenate a few values let's say 1 2 2 maybe an na or 3 and a 4 and then i say the minimum rank of y it gives me 1 2 2 na 4 and 5 we can also use a slight variation which is minimum rank of descending of y and this will give us 5 3 3 na 2 and 1 we also have an alternative to this which is the row number the row number will give us 1 2 3 na 4 and 5 so you notice that 2 is not coming 2 times and we can also use dense rank and dense rank will give us 1 2 2 na 3 and 4 then we also have the percent rank which gives us 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, NA, 0 0.75 and 1 and finally we have the cum which is the cumulative and that gives us the result as 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, NA, 0 0.8 and 1 so remember there is nothing right or wrong here it depends on what your requirement is and as per your requirement you can use any of these.